kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, Most now, uh, one question I have is, is how you, um, you know, have you or have you had people ask about, well, what if you stop making payments? Oh, yeah. Sometimes they ask that, like, what if you don't make my payment? Um, so then I say, gosh, Randy, that would concern me too for doing this with someone like me. Yep. Randy, what would make you feel comfortable to know that I'm going to make your payment? What, what could I do to make you feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. I throw it back on them. Okay. Um, but then most of the time also I'll say, look, do you want references? Do you want to pull my credit report? If you've got mm -hmm. good credit, you could say that. Do you want to pull my credit report uh, to see how I make my payments? Um, mm -hmm. You know, or, or or whatever. I'll say, you know, and then the other thing is I say, you know, you're going to be notified immediately if I don't make your payment. Mm -hmm. So you're going to know that right away. Mm-hmm. And, um, however, my, it, I, I'll have it come right out of my bank account. Okay. Then I'll wait to see if I need to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Cause the next level could be, you know, if they say, well, I'm still concerned. Like if you do, I don't have any way to get it back. I mean, most people don't know all the deed stuff and all of that. So they're not going to get this far, but if they did, there is an advanced strategy I could use that would say, okay, tell you what, if I'm over, over 15 days later on your payment, I will sign a deed to deed it back to you immediately. And you can have it held by an attorney. Most definitely. And that way, so, if I don't pay, they can record that deed and I have lose all my rights. Yeah, so Jay Jones, real estate Jay Jones actually said, you know, always ask questions and the creative solution works, yeah. you know, for him. So by all means, it's you, you have to ask those questions. And I like the way you phrased it where you didn't go straight to the okay well you know we can put a, a clause in there for the deed to go back oh, to yeah. you never would no. I do that. so no. you just went well what makes you feel comfortable yeah. you know what would make you feel comfortable to know <clears throat> i'm going to make your payment because i i would be Got concerned it. too and then yeah. just shut up and let them answer it might be like i just want it to come out automatically of your bank account every month you know what I'll absolutely do that for you. I always do that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, that might be their only concern, Randy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yep. don't assume that we know what their big concern really is. Right. Like what they're really thinking in their head. Mm. Okay. So it's the same thing with like lease options when they think, you mean you're going to put a tenant in there? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to put a tenant in there, but I'm responsible. Well, what yeah. happens if a, you know, if they trash it? I never assume I know what trash means to them. So I say, gosh. Oh, I hope they never trash it. But when you say trash it, what exactly does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. They might say, well, they're going to put red paint on the wall. That could be trash it to them. Right. Then the next person could say, like, they set it on fire. Totally different mm -hmm. answers then. Right? right. But unless I know what they mean by trashing it, I can't answer that question properly. So I ask the question back. What does that mean to them? Mm -hmm. Explain to me exactly what that means to you so I can answer your question properly. So... One thing that this brings brings to me is that you're always honest with the seller, no matter always. what, about always. what you're doing. Yes. And there's 100%. so many people out there that are not, and then they they the seller finds out later and they lost all that trust. Yeah. And I may not say like as a wholesaler, yeah, I say I'm wholesaling without saying the word wholesaling. Yeah, because they don't know so, what that is anyways. A oh, homeowner doesn't know what that is. So I just say I work with a bunch of different partners and, right. you know. And buyers that, you know. And, and buyers. And I go, we have different strategies. And one of my strategies is this. And we may go that way, but we don't. We'll, we're going to explore all options. Right. You know. So right. that's just me being honest with them. And 
them understanding that there's a lot of people out there that are not honest. Right. And, and that's bad for our Exactly. That's bad for our business. So when the seller finds out actually what they're doing, it's bad, you know? Yes. So it is. and then that's when they back out or they try to get out correct. of the deal or they sue you later or whatever. But you it, know it's lawsuits horrible. Yeah. So yeah. and uh, yeah. That you don't want that. You don't want that. No. I mean, I've made millions of dollars investing in real estate. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't need to do it dishonestly. You know right. what I mean? It's like, why? Why? So I could what? Make another hundred grand? No. Yeah. No. So you. I, I like to sleep at night. I like to feel good about it. I like. Yeah. I like to have a relationship with my sellers. I like. Mm -hmm. You know, not that we're going to be friends forever, but sometimes we're we're friendly. I mean, there's yeah. there's been so many people that I've done double deals with. You know, yep. they'll they'll sell me a house, and then I find out later they're like, "Hey, we got two more." What? Okay. And then because they, they love me, then they'll buy, sell me two more. Or so, or what? I had one lady; she sold me a house on a lease option. I made forty some grand on this. Is like twenty years ago. I made like okay. I made like forty grand on that deal. That was a lot then. Okay. And about two years after I bought her house, mm -hmm. she called me up. She wanted to live on the lake, so she wanted to just rent when she sold her house. She just wanted to rent something and just live on the lake. She called me up two years later and she goes, hey, I had the shoulder injury, I had a problem, ding my credit, so now I need to be a buyer. Can you help me find a home? Do you have a home for me to buy? She became my buyer later. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, funny. Really option. But that I mean, I've funny. had so many stories like that. It's just like people, oh, I've sold people a house and uh -huh. I there's one house I've owned three times. I've owned multiple houses multiple times, but okay. I've owned this one house three times because the seller, I mean, the buyer mm -hmm. um, it, it bought it from me, closed, and like a year or two later said, hey, do you want to buy the house back? We need to move to wherever. So I bought it back, lease optioned it again. <laughs> Same thing happened. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah, but they actually That's closed awesome. on it and bought it, not just to, you know, defaulted yeah. on it. I mean, they literally owned it. I was done, out okay. of there, like gone. Wow. So, so keep it open and for, honest. Most definitely, keep, you know you get you got to be open and honest with the customer. Now you don't have to speak your terminology. You got to speak the the seller's yes. terminology. Ob always, and that's that's okay. a big issue that a lot of people will make. They'll say, you know, I'm gonna lease option your um, house on a sandwich lease option, and the the, the seller's like, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. But I don't even say that. I just say right. I'm gonna lease your home with the right to buy it mm -hmm. at some few, you know, in th within three years or whatever it is we agree to. Yep. And I'm going to either rent it or rent it to someone else who wants to be a future homeowner. I mm -hmm. don't know which it is, but I am your tenant. I just won't right. live, live there. I okay. keep it real simple, just real simple, yeah. but true, true, but simple. So, so now that we established like kind of a little bit more about your business and what you've done, uh, and what you're doing, what is it that, how are you getting your leads? You said earlier that you're getting them through wholesalers and yep. just through connections and, and things like that. Are you currently marketing as well as, no. okay. But Randy, so, I'm at a totally different point in my life now, right? So okay. now I'm, um, I don't have as many rentals anymore. Okay. And I don't do as many fix and flip anymore. Okay. I do a lot of other things. Now I do a lot with hard money lending okay where i'm now the lender for other investors getting started yeah. or building their business or mm -hmm. i do a lot of apartment syndications so okay. i kind of that those are my big focuses so i don't do anything to market that it's pretty much word of mouth and, mm -hmm. and then i have a couple of people that are amazing rehabbers that get them you know get get almost everything financed that they do i, right. I do for them you know what i mean um, Got it. So it's kind of it changed a lot, but I still do deals. I have a okay. flip that's closing this Friday that I just finished um, mm -hmm. a month ago, and I had twelve offers <clears throat> on it. You know, a fix and flip. It was it's in Auburn Hills that I just finished. So I'll do them. But I, so a, an old friend brought that to me. He's the pastor of a church, mm -hmm. and he had two ladies in his church who had this house they needed to sell. One had lived there, set fire in the kitchen. <laughs> and took, they took the insurance but she had dementia or something yeah so it was a very small fire it didn't even go to the rafters it didn't go through the drywall at all mm -hmm. it, but it had smoke damage so the whole place needed to be cleaned and the kitchen gutted and you know yep. wh whatever but anyways it was a slam dunk deal but 
they took the insurance money and just sold it to me for a cheap deal. I made a lot of money on that deal. But that's awesome. They were so thrilled that I bought it from them and they didn't have to list it or they, you know, with what they yeah. got from me, what they got from the insurance, they hit the jackpot, they thought. And they might have bought what they got from insurance. I have no idea. But I hit and, the and jackpot it, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that and that came from, yeah. you know, just word of mouth. Um, I I wholesalers bring me deals. Okay. Um yeah, if you ever have a deal that's a potential subsidy <laughs> that you don't want to do, you yep. know, shoot it my way. If it if it's going to take more maybe than you want to do on it, or it's mm -hmm. not in your area that you want to invest on, keep that in mind. But I Most don't definitely. market for it. It's mostly word of mouth now. You know, okay. one of my agents came to me once. Um, I just sold a. I think I told this in the investor group, the Michigan Real Estate Investors Group. I I had I bought an eight unit right before mm -hmm. COVID hit. And it was in Midtown, and I got it for 200 grand. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, it needed to be gutted. I mean, there was people living in it, but it was not my standard. So I started, you know, as someone moved out, I would renovate the unit, make it really charming, yes. old time, blah, blah, blah. And I renovated the whole thing, and I, it's in my Roth IRA. And I just sold it, I closed on it July 31st. Mm -hmm. And that took like a few extra, you know, years. They took like really an extra year than I thought, just because probably COVID and, there was one lady mm -hmm. I couldn't evict for two years because of COVID. Wow. But anyways, other than that, um, it went it went pretty well. And that mm -hmm. went I sold it for eight hundred grand and went right back into my Roth IRA. Wow. It was a that's yeah. that, was a that's big crazy. Year. I put two hundred grand huge. in it, bought it for two hundred and sold it for eight. Plus it made Most... cash flow during those years. Oh wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those so, are the kind of things I like doing, but they come to me, like it was just one of my agents said, hey, Wendy, I got this deal. She does probate stuff. She said, I don't know what to do with it. And I go, I'll give you my advice. Let me, you know, let's sit down and talk. We sit down and yep. she goes, she goes, well, I thought maybe you'd want to buy it. I go, oh, well, tell me about it. She goes, well, it's an eight unit. And I go, oh, I don't really buy apartment buildings. And she said, well, and it's in Detroit. And I said, mm, I don't do Detroit. And she goes, <laughs> gosh, it's right by Wayne State. And I said, well, tell me more. <laughs> wait, wait, when you say it's right by a college, yeah, the yeah. The thing I was like, uh, Midtown, ding, ling, ling, ling. Wait, um, it's in Midtown. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested. What do they want for it? It never hit the market. Yeah. She goes. Her, she inherited this. Her mom. There was a mom who lived in California. Mm -hmm. Her daughter was a prominent doctor in Detroit. Owned it. Mm -hmm. Was not really a great landlord. It was kind of a slummy place, really. Um, but she said. She paid 200 grand for it. If you just give me 200, I just can get out of it. Okay, give me 200. Done. There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room.